Okay, so today we're doing a nutter bypass on a 1987 Jeep Wrangler YJ. Um, the vehicle is exhibiting some strange drivability issues such as sputtering, uh, lack of power. Um, these vehicles have some very, very strange um, pre-fuel injection emissions controls like this stepper motor right here on the back of the carb. This actually meters um, how much fuel comes into the carb. So it's kind of like a uh, um, like a pre-fuel injection feedback control system for carburetors. So uh, what we got is we got that same carburetor remanufactured, but without that stepper motor, just to rule any other carb issues. Uh, I forget off the top of my head who did this carb, but I'll look it up, I'll post it in the description. They seem to do a very, very nice job. Very, very nice piece for a reman carb. I've not seen one this nice before. So anyway, we're gonna be doing that carb swap. We're gonna be doing a what's called a nutter bypass, which uh, basically reroutes these two wires from the distributor over to the ignition control module underneath the cool and recovery bottle down there. So we're gonna splice in to those two wires, <laughs> connect them up down there, put on a new carb, and we're also gonna time the motor, set it to, to eight degrees down there. So let's get started. All right, so we got the cool and recovery bottle out. That was just, uh, uh, three three ace bolts of varying lengths uh, And that should be the ignition control module down there And it looks like that's got a couple of screws that come in from perhaps the wheel well So yeah, perhaps or maybe just one So it looks like this one's broken off and we just got this one here to deal with Gotta love old vehicles all right, so we got the ignition control module out. Uh, as you can see, that screw was broken off. That was another 3 8 bolt holding it on there. You can see all the potting on the back of the, the module is just completely gone. Uh, hopefully it's still good. I guess we'll find out. Probably making Greg nervous saying that. All right, so we gotta identify what these wire colors are here because obviously they're all dirty. So we'll clean those up and go from there. All right, so this is a wiring diagram for the vehicle. Right here you have the ignition control module, you have the distributor right here. So we're going to be hooking this orange wire up, first we're going to be severing this orange wire and this violet or purple wire from the ECM which is right here. And we're going to be connecting orange to orange and violet to black as it is in this diagram. And if you look at the actual vehicle harness here, this is the ignition control module again, we have orange up here right we have green we have a black with a green stripe and this really looks like black all the diagrams online show purple but not really seeing that so we found this kind of crude drawing online apologies to the author for calling it crude that shows the after which is and you can clearly see it's violet to violet So we don't appear to have a violet wire color on this vehicle. So we'll figure it out. All right, so we think we solved our mystery. Obviously this wire is our orange one. We're looking for purple, but we didn't see anything that looked really purple or violet like it did in the harness. We realized it's just probably kind of faded. When you flip this thing over here and look at the back of the ignition control module, inside here, you probably can't see it too well in the video, but it looks like the wire immediately next to the orange wire, which is right here, is purple or violet in this picture. So these wires probably just faded in color over the 30 some odd years this vehicle's been out. So we're gonna go with that. We're gonna be cutting this wire here and this wire here and connecting it to these two wires here. And we already have a pre-twisted section of wire. We couldn't find the exact colors that match the vehicle. Where did I put that? It's around here somewhere. Probably right in front of me. Oh, here it is. So we just bought a uh, some black and red wire, and we're just gonna use this instead of the actual colors that match the vehicle. Again, again we would have liked to match the color, it's just auto parts store didn't have. This is 16 gauge uh, automotive copper wire. So let's get started. All right, so we got the uh, new wire in up there. We got it spliced in. I'm just putting some heat shrink wrap on it. We got the ignition control module wire going down there. We obviously got to clean it up and fasten it. Uh, we started the vehicle. It started right up. 
um, which was a vast improvement before you had to crank it and crank it. Sometimes it would die, start it again. So I think this part of the bypass is done. Um, we just have to clean this up and then we'll get on to the timing and the vacuum hoses. All right, so we're getting ready to do the timing. Um, I found the eight degree mark. It's highlighted with a Sharpie. I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, the bottom mark is negative two and each mark goes up two degrees. So there's a black Sharpie on that, on that mark there. So we'll hook up the timing light. We're gonna loosen the distributor hold down bolt and then we're gonna time it, see how it runs. And then I guess we'll do the carb after that. And I guess the vacuum lines. Now, when you time it, you gotta make sure you disconnect the vacuum advance and plug the vacuum hose just so we don't have a massive vacuum leak on our hands. So that's right here. And I think it's actually already disconnected, so. And the hold down bolt, I believe, is a half inch and it's right down below the distributor. Very, very inconvenient to get to. So let's time it. All right, so we got the motor running. We got our timing light hooked up. And we actually already set the timing. We put, I don't know if you can see that down there, but there's a, a little white mark on the, on the damper. And that's lined up just about with eight degrees. We put a black Sharpie mark on the timing mark. And for those of you who've never used a timing light or haven't used it since high school like me, you hook, uh, just hook it up to the battery leads over there and you hook the, uh, the pickup on the number one coil wire. Pretty easy. And you can see that when the light flashes, our white mark and the balancer lines up at eight degrees on, the, on those timing marks. So now we're gonna tighten the distributor hold down bolt and uh, we'll go from there. We'll adjust our vacuum lines. All right, so we got the distributor hold down bolt tightened up. It's a hold on steady at eight degrees. Um, we're gonna leave it there for a while. We may advance it a little bit more later on, but eight degrees is good for now. Now we're gonna replace the carb. So we got this really nice reman carb, like I mentioned before, and I believe it was guaranteed carburetors. So you can see it's a very, very nicely done piece for a reman. And there should just be Four bolts on the bottom, you have to disconnect the stepper motor on the back and the throttle linkage and the fuel lines. Shouldn't be too tough. So famous last words, let's give it a shot. All right, so we got the new carburetor resting on. Uh, I got the throttle hooked up there. Still need to hook up the throttle springs. The fuel line is not in, but it's uh, in position. Got to tighten that down. This is the vacuum line we're gonna be teeing into. I'm gonna replace it because it's nice, hard and nasty. That's what she said. We're gonna be going into that port on the side of the carb. Um, other than that, this is a pretty straightforward swap. Just got to put the bolts back on and we should be good to go. All right, so we got everything hooked back up. We just cranked it up um, and it purrs like a kitten. So we got, like I said, the throttle linkage here. Got the springs. We capped off all the empty vacuum lines. We'll eventually just probably eliminate a lot of these once we figure out what they do. Um, plug the fuel line back in, teed into this ported vacuum over here for the vacuum advance on the distributor. So this was already, there was already a T here. We added another one right here that goes to the distributor's vacuum advance. Hooked up all the wiring connectors that still existed and uh, we started up and it purred like a kitten, accelerated wonderfully. Took a second to get gas into the carb though, which is not surprising since the new one was obviously empty. So I think this job is just about done. We got the nutter bypass cable all neatly tied up over here, a little bit of extra cable. Um, the owner of this vehicle is considering ordering another ignition control module just because of that potting that was coming off that we noted earlier in the video, but the existing one is bolted up down there. And so that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope someone finds this video helpful.